So this is my latest project right here. This is actually the uh, second. This is the one of the finals of it. The first one I did was more of a prototype. It's a it's a carbon arc lamp. I was kind of fascinated with these things. So this is the power supply box right here, and it just has a 15 amp, 110 going in, and then this cable, which is 10 gauge, coming out with this big Molex connector on the end, two pin Molex connector. Um, on the inside of the box, there's quite a bit of goodies. My main power transformer is right there. It's kind of hard to see in there, but it's a 2000 watt microwave oven transformer that I hacksawed the secondary winding off of and wrapped it with this this 10 gauge stranded copper wire. I did 20 turns and I put a center tap at 10 turns so if I ever want to change the way I have the rectification going the diodes or if I ever want to put a switch to go from uh, 10 volts or 20 volts I'm pretty sure it puts out about 20 volts under load more like 18 but this transformer is extremely robust I mean the thing is like it's beefy. It's probably the best microwave transformer I've ever seen. The thing's humongous. It was out of this old microwave convection oven combo. The thing was built out of like stainless steel. I couldn't believe it. So it's pretty cool. The for rectification, I have two two bridge rectifiers rated at 25 amps, um, and then surge of I think 30 in here and I have them on this big aluminum big piece of aluminum with kind of like heat sink and then there's this bus bar back here so each one of these the AC comes out and is split into two 10 gauge wires off of the one 10 gauge wire they go to each of the rectifiers and then the outputs of all the rectifiers go to this bus bar down there and the bus bar feeds the output here and also these filter caps I have one microwave um, capacitor here and then two I think these are like 2000 microfarad 200 volt capacitors just daisy chained on there and then a bleeder resistor I don't really know if it's necessary at 20 volts but I put it on there anyway it was already there and then when I started first running this it had some issues with getting too hot so I actually added on, originally I just had these holes on the top here, and I kind of was expecting that that wasn't going to be enough. So uh, later on as I tried it, it would get too warm too quick. So I added on this fan, actually, out of, a, out of the same microwave. And as you can see here, let me plug it in. When you turn it on, that fan powers up, and it actually has a grill right here so it actually blows the air out the grill and then it sucks air in through here so the air comes in on the top here goes through the transformer cavity here cooling the transformer then past all the, uh, the rectifiers here and then out here it's actually impressively it doesn't get that hot I would have thought that these rectifiers I've run it for five ten minutes before and they only get slightly warm Originally, I had some thinner cables going from the AC to the rectifiers, and they were actually getting hot, the cables, because I thought that I could go from a 10 gauge to like two 14 gauges, and then those went out to each of the rectifiers, but it turns out um, they, were, they were getting too warm, so I just felt safer putting more 10 gauge, and I actually soldered the connections in there, and then these are all spade connectors, and yeah, that's the power supply, just a uh, switch over here that powers all of it up. It's just directly going to the microwave transformer and there's nothing in between there. Microwave oven transformer of course is grounded. Um, also the negative output of this is grounded to the transformer. So that's good. And uh, I don't know if that was necessary but I did that for safety. Um, this is the light I have right now. The search lamp that I've made. Um, it's kind of a I don't know. It's it's kind of a prototype. 
It's painted matte black. I just have it clamped onto the a chair here. It's kind of on a gimbal here, which is kind of cool. Um, the power comes in the back with this Molex connector here. See, this Molex connector plugs into this Molex connector. And then, here, I'll do it here. These are rated at 20 amps. Um, I'm pushing, like, 50, so... I don't know if they're really rated for that, but they work. I mean, if it blows up, whatever. Um, then they come into these 10-gauge cables that go up to a fuse bank here. Uh, my diodes are only rated at 50 amps, so I really didn't want them to uh, get fried because they're a little bit pricey. So, And it's just a pain to replace them. So to stay on the safe side, I ran it for a few days without it, and then I realized probably should put some fuses. Um... They didn't make a fuse in the glass type like this that I could see big enough for 50 amps at 12 vol or 20 volts DC. So I have two wired in parallel here, and they're each a 20 amp fuse. And these get warm when you run it. When you first strike an arc, you can kind of see the discoloring maybe in there. They get toasty. So I've almost blown those, so I might need a few more. Those both run into the lamp here, and inside the lamp housing, I've spray painted the inside silver. I'm going to actually put some backing. Uh, I'm going to put a reflector back there. I think I might need one. But for the electrode holders and electrodes, I have these big bus connectors, and they have little set screws that tighten on these carbons. And the way I have it set up so I can strike the arc is each cable comes in and then this arm here actually pushes the two together. I don't know why that screw is loose, but it is. I'll have to tighten that up. But then that arm goes through the outside here so you can push it forward, strike an arc, and then feather it out. It's not really hands-free. It's not motorized, but it works. So... I guess I'll power it up for you guys. So you just flip it on. It powers up its little fan. And then you just push this forward. It doesn't look bright. But I mean, if you... It's ridiculously bright. And you can see these fuses, maybe, when you strike an arc. They get red hot. And right now I'm not touching it. It just has an arc going. Now, right now, I can't run it for very long, because as you can see, the electrodes and electrode holders are already red hot. So, it would easily... It, I've had it light the wood on fire before, so I need to put some shielding in here to keep everything cool. And then I also need to put a, a fan. Probably going to put, like, a CPU fan on the bottom here, blowing up towards them. That might work. But, yeah, that's most of the project here. I calculated the uh, the draw. I had it. It draws about 18 volts at um, 18 volts at somewhere around. I'm thinking probably 40, 50 amps at the max. So 18 volts times 50 amps, because it draws down to probably 18 when you actually are running it. 900 watts at full blown and that's not even striking an arc because I've blown I blew a 50 amp fuse striking the arc like that you can see the lines on the camera I can't look at it it burns my eyes so you know it's got some serious UV coming off of it but yeah that's the project I'm going to turn it off now I'll do some uh, testing footage at night 
shining it up in the sky at some point. As you can see, that bleed resistor actually doesn't do much because it still makes a little spark when you close them up after it's done. But I'm pleased with it. It's nice. It looks good. I might use it for something. I don't know. It's pretty cool. But yeah, that's one of my latest projects. See you guys later.